Where do we attach our gauges? Well, that's going to depend on what type of system we have and where that meter device is located. Let's look at several examples. Whether we're in the heating mode or the cooling mode, we look at the true suction line and we can see that's always going to be low temperature, low pressure. So we know that we can get our suction gauge there no matter what. We will always have suction pressure no matter what mode it's in. So if it's accidentally in heating mode and you expect it to be in cooling mode, you are still going to have suction pressure to protect your suction gauge. Now we also need to get superheat on the reversing valve with the three pipes, the one in the middle, between that and the suction line accumulator, if we get our actual suction line temperature there, and then we get our suction pressure, convert that to a saturated temperature with our actual suction line temperature minus our suction saturated temperature, and we can get superheat. Regardless of what mode it's in, we can always get superheat. Now it's important to know that we're protecting the compressor from any potential liquid refrigerant, any potential liquid flood back. And also if our super gets too high, we can damage the compressor. So we want to make sure that our super is in good range. And so whether it's heating or cooling, we can always get super heat in that location. Like the others, we have three points. We have one here in a big line, one in a small line, and one in our true suction line. In the summertime, we can use this for our suction gas, low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. And I could measure my superheat with a temperature clamp here in the same spot. But I prefer to use this port for my suction pressure because it's always going to be suction. Whether it's summertime or wintertime, this is always gonna be suction. And I put my clamp thermometer right here to measure superheat. And whether it's summertime or wintertime, I can measure my superheated vapor coming back to the compressor. This whole panel removes so it's easy to get to. If I wanna measure superheat, I put my gauge here. Put my temperature clamp right here on the true suction line and no matter what mode I'm in I can always measure my super heat. It's nice and easy to get to on this particular model. Other models are not this easy to get to. So for our suction side we could put our suction gauge here if we're in AC mode only. So if we're just in cooling mode I can attach my gauge here I get my pressure while it's running. The problem is if we go into heat pump mode this now becomes the hot gas side. This now becomes a high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor discharge. So if you touch this, it, be hot. And if we used our old fashioned gauge, we could easily blow this gauge because the pressure in this line could be much higher than what the gauge is for. Now we're to 288. And notice this gauge only goes to 250. Over here, we're in the over pressure side. So by having my high pressure gauge here, I knew that I'm protected. But what would happen had I had my low pressure gauge here Yes, it could have damaged it. So whether it's summertime or wintertime, I like to put my pressure gauge right here on the true suction port. Of the three, the one in the middle by itself. That way we always know that we're on the suction side. So summer or winter, I prefer to put it here. Now some people prefer to put it here in the summertime because that is proper, it is the AC mode. However, I did run across a situation to where an installer wired the system wrong. And when I came out there to start it up, I put my gauges on, went inside, turned it on, came back out, and it actually had blown my old fashioned style gauge because the pressures are so high and it was also in the middle of summer. And so I had to go find another gauge while I was out of town. So from then on, I started putting them here. But either way, as long as you understand what mode, in AC mode, I can put it here. But if I use this one, it's always going to be correct no matter what. So in this brand, we would have this be our liquid line in the summertime, and this would be our suction side in the summertime. No big deal. However, there is a third port on the true suction line right back here. And if we always use that for suction pressure, we don't have to worry about it being winter or summer. We could simply use always that for the suction side. This one I have the option for using for suction pressure in the summertime, but I could use the true suction port back here for winter or summer. This brand, we have three ports. We have one here, one here, and one in the middle. The one in the middle is true suction. I prefer to use that all the time for suction, whether it's summertime or wintertime. But in the summertime, you could use this port for suction and measure your superheat here, and you would be fine. In the wintertime, the refrigerant flow reverses. I get hot gas coming this way, so you'd have to put your suction gauge there. To measure superheat, you'd actually have to put your gauge inside of this unit, and it's kind of a pain to get to, but it is doable. Here's three separate pieces of equipment, but if we understand where that meter device is located, it makes our job a whole lot easier. Now, because our metering device in the winter time is over here, it's behind this valve, I can still use this port right here for my high pressure liquid. I can measure my subcooling, whether it's summertime or the winter time, because my meter device is located over here. So in this brand, we would have this be our liquid line, but what happens in the winter time when we reverse flow? 
and now have liquid refrigerant flowing this direction. But our metering device is located right here in the very back. So because my metering device is located behind the valve, I can use this for the high pressure liquid measuring subcooling, whether it's summertime or the wintertime. Examples where our high pressure gauge is over here on the true liquid line. In cooling mode, we consider that after our metering device. That's how most manufacturers put it, but there are a lot of manufacturers that will put the service port before the metering device if we're looking at it from cooling mode. If it's in cooling mode, it wouldn't matter if it was over here after the metering device or over here before the metering device because that metering device is being bypassed. So it's like it's not even there. So in cooling mode, doesn't matter where we put it. However, in heating mode, now we're going to have an issue. Now we see that that high pressure liquid is flowing towards the metering device. So if we had our pressure gauge hooked up on that true liquid line, it wouldn't be an issue. But the manufacturers that put that service port behind that metering device, it is going to cause a problem. We're no longer going to be able to check what our liquid pressure is because we're actually gonna be measuring a saturated low pressure mixture right here. So this causes some confusion when people look at heat pumps. Unfortunately, this manufacturer leads people to think that this entire liquid line becomes suction because they hook their gauge on a small line and they see that it's low pressure. So they assume this whole entire line is low pressure and that's simply not so. It's really important to understand, is the gauge port gonna be before or after this meter device. And in this case, because it's a heat pump in heat pump mode, and we put the high pressure gauge port after that meter device, it's no longer gonna be reading high pressure. It's gonna be a low pressure saturated mixture. Let's take a look at an example of a manufacturer doing that. This particular manufacturer installs their metering device for their heat pump in the outdoor service valve. So it's your typical service valve, your service ports over here in the back side. During regular AC mode, liquid refrigerant travels this way up through the valve and it hits this fixed over smearing device, also called a piston. That forces the piston in this direction, but notice it doesn't fit very tight. Refrigerant travels around the metering device like it's not even there. The liquid refrigerant continues on through the liquid line, but in heat pump mode, liquid refrigerant is going to flow this direction through the screen. It's going to hit this fixed over smearing device or this piston, and it's going to shove it into these machined grooves where it very tightly fits. Then refrigerant can only travel through the hole in the very, very center where it meters the refrigerant, allows a pressure drop. Then we send that saturated refrigerant mixture to the outdoor coil where we can boil and absorb heat from the air outside. This brand, we have three ports. The one in the middle is true suction. In the summertime, you could use this port for your high pressure and measure your subcooling here, and you would be fine. In the wintertime, the refrigerant flow reverses. I get hot gas coming this way, so this would be the high pressure line, and there would be liquid coming back to this port. But because this manufacturer puts their meeting device right here, we cannot get the liquid pressure because our service port is after where that meeting device is located. So you'd actually be reading a type of suction pressure. So in the winter time, you'd have to put your high pressure gauge here and your suction gauge there. So in the winter time, high pressure gauge here, suction gauge there. In the summertime, high pressure gauge here, suction gauge here in the middle or optionally over here in the side just because of where this brand puts their meeting device. You still have liquid coming this way in the winter, and in the summer, there's liquid flowing this way. On this side, in the summertime, there's low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor, suction gas coming this direction. In the wintertime, there's high temperature, high pressure vapor coming this direction. However, what I prefer to do is if I'm installing one of these brands, or if I'm working on an existing one that I have to do something with the refrigeration circuit, I like to put a service port right here on the outside. That way I can measure my subcooled liquid before it gets to that metering device and I can measure the subcooling on that liquid line. That's just my personal preference. It makes diagnosing a whole lot easier. On this side in the winter time is gonna be high pressure and on this side in the summer time is gonna be low pressure. This port here in the middle is always gonna be low pressure. And remember, we always want to check superheat and subcooling. If I got a thermostatic expansion valve, I focus more on subcooling first, but I still want to do superheat. With a fixed overspeeding device, we focus more on superheat first, but I still want to know that I have enough subcooled liquid coming to that meeting device. Superheat and subcooling. It tells us where the refrigerant's at. On these brands, because my metering device is behind that service valve, I can use that liquid line, whether it's summertime or wintertime, and measure the subcooling, either coming to my unit or leaving the unit, because it's always a subcooled liquid. In the wintertime or the summertime, I prefer to use the true suction port on either one of these systems, so that way I know what my super is going to be coming back to the compressor, whether it's summertime or the wintertime. The one that's a little bit more challenging is this one where we understand our metering device is before our service port. So let's try this again with a little bit more practical application. 
I'm gonna take my digital gate set, power it up, make sure all of my valves are closed because sometimes they rattle around in a truck and they open themselves up. Make sure all my hoses are tight because they do the same, they get loose. There's All three of those are loose. Now I'm gonna take my suction port, my suction hose, and I'm gonna put it on the true suction side. Now I could put it here because I'm in AC mode, but I find it much more productive to put it just right here. Now my refrigerant set for 32, I'm gonna change it down to 410A. So we're in the correct refrigerant. And then I'm also gonna take my temperature clamp and I'm gonna put my temperature clamp also right here on the true suction port. So I'm gonna put it right here. Now some people prefer to put it in other places, but here's a good distance because I wanna keep it farther away from my reversing valve and I don't wanna put it on any one of these brace joints. So that's about the best spot I can get it on this particular unit. Now I can measure my superheat. Now for my subcooling, again, it depends on where my metering device is. My metering device is up over here. It's a TXV over here. So I know that this port here is always, always, always going to be liquid. So that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to take my high pressure hose. I'm going to tie it off right here. I'm going to go ahead and purge my gauges a little bit. So now I'm reading the high pressure. And then I'm going to take my clamp and I'm going to put my clamp right over here to where it's always liquid. I can put it here on the outside or I can put it over here if I wanted, but either way it's where it's always going to be liquid. Now I'm reading the high side and the low side. I'm reading my line temperatures of both sides. My gauges are automatically calculating my saturated temperature and it's automatically calculating my superheat, my subcooling, all that is done for me. So it's a much faster way. So we take a look at our numbers. We see that our superheat is at 16 degrees superheat. That's actually pretty good. And we see that our saturated temperature is 38.8. We know that we have a TXV inside. The job of the TXV is to try to maintain superheat. So we're going up a little bit. We're going to let it run. But over here, we see that my subcooling is at 1.2. I barely have any liquid refrigerant feeding that metering device. It's a pretty mild day, so that's probably the only reason it's still working. And you see that superheat starting to climb. There's just not enough refrigerant feeding that metering device so it can maintain superheat for us. So it's starting to rise up. And again, if this was a hotter day, that'd be much more significant. If we look in the tag of that unit, it's calling for a 12 degrees of subcooling. And now we're over here at 0.8. Our subcooling is dropping. So we have a starved condensing unit. We don't have enough refrigerant in our condensing unit. We're not feeding enough refrigerant to our metering device. And we see our super heats here rising. Now we're at 20 and our saturated temperature is dropping. So that means we're getting closer and closer to freezing. That means I have a starved evaporator coil. There's not enough refrigerant in evaporator coil. So if there's not enough refrigerant in the condensing coil, and there's not enough refrigerant in the evaporator coil, that means there's not enough refrigerant in this whole entire system. So we need to add refrigerant and find where that leak is. It's gonna be a little too warm today to actually check it in the heating mode, but I do wanna show you what's happening. Where my gauge is hooked up, I'm on the true suction side, and I'm also on the true liquid line. No matter what happens, it's still on the same port, so I should be safe. I am gonna add an extra gauge port here so we can see what happens when we do reverse it. Right now our vapor line is showing 107.5. So this is our vapor line, 107.5, we got 107.2. That line is the same. This line and this line is connected. Let's see what happens when we unplug that reversing valve. Now what we've done is we've connected the discharge line to what was before the suction line. We're now sending hot gas inside of the house. So this line pressure is now 195.0. And if we look, our discharge line is right about the same. It's right there, just right below 200. This gauge is not accurate. You see how the numbers move. So the discharge line temperature and the hot gas line temperature, they're the same because they are the same exact line. So had I put my suction gauge there, this one goes up to 250 and we're already at 208 and climbing. So that's why we don't want to use this line all the time. It's just giving you an example. But our liquid line, this is still liquid refrigerant because our meter device is over here on the opposite side of our valve. I'm still reading my high side and I'm still reading my suction side just like I should. You see now that our superheat has jumped up to 31.8. This is now my evaporator coil. I have really high superheat and also look at my saturated temperature, it's really low, 30, 35.5 and really close to freezing. So I have a starved evaporator coil and if I look over at my condensing coil, I only have, which is now inside the house, I'm getting liquid from my condensing coil inside. It's uh, 1.2 degrees of subcooling. So I don't have enough refrigerant in my 
indoor condensing coil and I don't have enough refrigerant in my outdoor evaporator coil, I don't have enough refrigerant in the system. So it's a cool way that we can actually do subcooling and superheat even though it's on a heat pump. And now this meter device, this TXV, is now being used. And now this is the meter device being used because it's warm here and then now it's cool over here. So there is a temperature drop across the metering device. It's now flowing in this direction. The refrigerant flows in this direction, it bypasses it. So we're in heating mode, this one's being used. The one inside is being bypassed. Understanding that refrigeration cycle will help you understand where to put your gauges. Knowing where that meter device is located will help you understand what line is you're working with. And if we know the suction gauge always goes in the suction line, where you're measuring superheated vapor, where it's supposed to be superheated, where it's supposed to be subcooled, if you can connect that refrigeration cycle, that drawing with the actual system, because they're the same thing, then you will always know where to put your gauges on any type of equipment. It also is very important to understand the refrigeration cycle for diagnostics purposes. So we get into diagnostics, whether it's a heat pump or an air conditioner or whatever mode it's in, it will help you with the diagnostics, understanding where the refrigerant's at in that system. So very important never stop learning and remember repetition is learning so hearing it again and again drawing it again and again and it touching what you draw to the actual components will help you identify that it really is the exact same thing